Hi, my name is Jacob, and I'm here today to talk about how the alpha works downrange. Why is it so simple? So, to be able to really outline and break down what is happening, we need to have a quick crash course on what a battlefield zero is because the alpha, it effectively installs a secondary max point blank at or near the max effective range of that given cartridge. Now, what do I mean by that? So first off, let's just break down that for a max point blank, what that means is that a bullet will neither rise nor fall beyond a given target silhouette. Now this silhouette to scale, we're using these whiteboards. They are 24 by 36 inches, which is real close to a 20 by 40 inch E-type. Now just to help with the visual comparison of this analysis, you can see here that this is really similar to five by 10 by 20 by 40, hence our 20 by 40 inch E-type. So looking at a 5.56, 55 grain out of a 16 inch barrel with a 50 meter zero, this is gonna be our point of aim, center of the target. Because again, we wanna make it where it doesn't rise or fall beyond our silhouette. So with a 50 meter zero, or in, something that needs to be taken into consideration is that we have an offset here of our optic center line to bore center line. We're gonna assume this to be 2.75 inches. Why am I not using 1.5, 1.93, or 2.26? Strictly because those are the center lines measured from the top of your pick rail, not it does not also reflect the offset for your bore. So that's where we're gonna be using 2.75. So if we have a point of aim to point of impact, meaning that's where our bullet's going, and we have an offset of 2.75 inches, we know at that point, I need that bullet to go up to intercept this line of sight. So I have to tilt up my gun. So that means the bullet is rising from muzzle to 50 meters. So our bullet rises, passes through our point of aim, but it's going to keep rising. And the distance with which that it rises is called a max ord. In this case, the bullet will rise no greater than 1.8 inches. And this will happen at 130 meters. Past that, gravity is going to be doing the work of only strictly having that bullet drop. So past 130, our bullet's dropping, it will re-intercept our point of aim at 200 meters. And this is our 50, 200 meter battlefield zero. There are other examples like 25 and 300. We'd be happy to go into greater detail to why one might want to use one over another. However, for the sake of this example, we're gonna strictly focus on the 50, 200. Past 200 meters, our bullet is still dropping, and we have all this estate on our silhouette with that which we are gonna call Mr. White. So from our center point on our target to the bottom, if our total height's 40 inches, I'm aiming center, that means I have 20 inches worth of estate that I can now look to use. So from aim center to the bottom for 20 inches, that means that by the time the bullet gets down to here, that's 360 meters. So for a battlefield zero under this condition and setup, means that from muzzle to 360 meters, I can aim center and I'll be on our silhouette here. Now, for some people, 200 meters, this could be different. Depending if you have a shorter or longer barrel length, this value of where that bullet is falling and re-intercepting that point of aim will vary. However, for the sake of what we're doing here, we're not looking to shoot a fly on our target. This isn't minute a fly, this is minute a whiteboard. So even if, say, that the bullet crosses at 180 or 220, for the sake of just sheer practicality, this is just fine. And that's why, 
even if we use a short or a long barrel, it's the reason we still use the 5200 because it's so simple and forgiving for the end user downrange. So from 50 to 360, we're nowhere covered. Past 360, gravity is still at work and the bolt's gonna be dropping off our target. So what do we do to compensate? Well, we're gonna start aiming higher above our target. Now this is the scale at 360 meters. This is how big a one MOA dot uh, would look. I know it's not a circle, it's pretty hard, but close. So if you were using a larger dot than say one MOA, say it was two MOA, it would be two X this. And if it was a three MOA, three X that, so forth. So we're gonna start aiming higher above our target. Now, if even if in this case, I was just looking to aim at the target, we know that bullets, the rate with which they're dropping increases over distance. So that means past 360, I'm gonna have to start holding a non-linear value. I'm gonna start having to hold more and more and more to start compensating for the faster bullet drop at those different distances. So it doesn't make a lot of sense to aim here just to squeeze out, say, 20, 30 more meters. Because at that point, I'm still at the bottom of the target. We have all this to work with. So at that point, it makes sense. Let's start holding over the target. Now, holding over a target, you can see here that on a red dot or a holographic site, you're holding in space. You won't have any kind of reference mark to be able to correlate your position that you're holding over to the target. Now in practice, can you get close? Can you get real good? Absolutely. It would also potentially be a perishable skill that without regular training, to be able to have that kind of shot placement for a first or second round impacts, it will be difficult, especially say that you're holding over and it's a mover. Well, now you're having a lead in X and Y. You're having to hold over X, Y just to be able to have your shot placement on our whiteboard. Even if it wasn't a mover, say there were crosswinds, say there's crosswinds and it's a mover. Say that in this case, you were thinking about using bullet splash and absolutely we should always look at using every possible advantage to be able to get an accurate shot. But say that that day, the day before it rained, say that your target is in tall grass or in a wooded area, it may be a luxury to rely on using bullet splash to be able to make the proper corrections to be able to get your shot placement. So again, we are back to holding somewhere in space above this target. Now, if we know that, say that our target, if it was at about 500 yards, and we know that the bullet drop is about 40 inches, well, instead of having to try to guess where a hold is for 40 inches at that distance, our philosophy with the alpha is why not shift your target image to the holdover? So instead of holding out in space, we'll shift the image to your holdover. And now let's take it one step further. Why not, based on the practicality of a 50, 200 meter battlefield zero, why don't we install a secondary max point blank? So yet again, we can guarantee that all I got to do is aim at the target, at target center. And by the time the bullet has risen and fallen to our, the actual position of our target, we'll get a hit. And that's what the alpha does. So there are two SKUs that are the workhorses for the Alpha. That's 7.5 MOA, which converts to 2.18 mil, or 9.0, which converts to 2.62 mil. For this example, it worked out actually quite beautifully that by inducing a 7.5 MOA optical offset, which would be comparable to say, if you had an LPVO and you dialed seven and a half MOA, or say you're using a mil reticle and you held 2.2 mils. That's exactly what we're doing, but in this case, we are just shifting the image. 
Otherwise, it's the same concept. But because it's prismatic, it's you don't have to fumble with turrets. There are no batteries. There are as there's no range estimation, and I will show you here and momentarily. But it basically the alpha renders you're thinking to a simple yes no question. In this case, does your target exceed 360 meters? So with our alpha optically shifting the position as we see it through our primary optic, Mr. White no longer appears to be here. He's up here. He's already at the proper holdover that we just have to aim here and we'll get our hits. So by having this offset, this basically installs a second zero to where our 5200 meter zero is like a 5420 meter zero. By aiming center, my point of aim will be my point of impact at 420 meters. If my target's between 360 and 420, in this case, that simply means that I'm holding over too much, too high to have this exact placement, but that means I'm just right here. I'm still on the target. Past 420, my bullet now is, we have the next 20 inches for drop to look at. And that means that by the time the bullet reaches to the girdle of Mr. White here, we're at 480 meters. And then if that distance, I can visually look and discern that that target is a long ways away. I might not just aim center. I might start favoring high on the target, but I want to emphasize on the target. I'm not holding over the target. I'm still on the target, which when the, when adrenaline's pumping, you know, someone said, I thought this was really hilarious. They said, mathematics sucks, but when you're getting shot at, mathematics is infinitely worse. So in this case, instead of having to say mill a target, take the time to laze a target. In this case, you're just on the target and you're engaging. So by aiming above, here, favoring high, that means I can squeeze out just a little bit more distance. And I can actually now reach out as far as 530 meters. If you, if you convert that to yards, multiply it by 1.1, we're looking at about 580 yards. The max effective range of a 5.56 is approximately 600 meters. So by installing a secondary max point blank on our target, we've effectively been able to render a solution where we can be effective at slash near the max effective range of the round that we're using. And that's not just for 5.56. Again, we're not looking to shoot the fly on the target. This is not minute a fly, this is minute a whiteboard. So even if in this case, you wanna look at the ballistics of a different barrel length or a different cartridge altogether, one of the big advantages that we have is that gravity physics is rather constant. So the rate with which bullets are going to drop is going to be similar, very similar. So comparing cartridge to cartridge, yeah, these numbers might change a little bit, but they mostly change based on a different zero. And at that point, you have a lot of robust flexibility. So looking at this, with having a alpha set at 7.5 MOA from muzzle to 360 meters, I'm not going to use the alpha. For targets past 360 out to 530 meters, I'm aiming right here. And I'm going to get hits here. And let's say that this, this target's a mover or there's winds. At that point, Again, instead of holding somewhere in space, X, Y, look at this. Now I'm just leading my target in X. I'm just holding left or right. Very simple. And it's based on this concept of max point blank that we already standardly use for our everyday rifle that by installing that second, you keep it as kiss. Keep it simple, stupid. It's stupid simple. 
the idea of optically shifting an image higher can also, earlier we were talking about that difference in bore offset. Well, you can use that to help compensate that off, you know, that difference, say when you're clearing rooms, if you're looking to engage that T-box, you know that based on your point of aim, you're gonna have to aim even higher above where you want your shot placement to cover that 2.75 inch offset. Well, you can use the same alpha that does this to now raise your target image closer, if not equal, to your point of aim. You can also use the same alpha for simunition. Given the fact they have a slower velocity, now you have something that's gonna be more accurate to say if you're using a true 5.56 five, round. This also, the same alpha could be used to switch from supers to subs. We have on many repeated occasions have been able to demonstrate we can switch from a 100 meter super to a 100 meter sub. Now, the only reason that this is not currently posted on our website is because when we did our initial analysis, it was for nine and 16 inch barrel lengths. And one thing that became quickly obvious is that basically nobody has just a regular nine and 16 inch. It's, there's a lot of lengths in between. And so it was important to us if we are gonna bring you, the end user, a solution that is gonna be accurate, such as this, where you just select from a drop downs, and then we are able to provide the optimum unit for you. And that's our plan. We have a 300 blackout barrel, we're gonna be cutting inch by inch and running various grain weights through it. So I would just, you know, Keep your eyes out for, for that because it will be coming here real soon. But that I just wanted to break down that this concept is, it applies to many other functions. And just last thing I'll say is this idea of red dot, which this is how big your dot would look at 480 meters. you don't have to use it just on a red dot or a holographic site. If you, technically, and I don't think of use with irons, but it can be used with virtually anything. And in the case of an LPVO, having, being able to engage 500 plus meter targets at one X is doable. But with magnification, it's clockwork. With this, you can, with good principles, shooting principles, just a little bit of training, then you can pretty much, you're, you're, you can expect to hit first round. And this is where we've been able to demonstrate at uh, Fort Benning for OSA, at uh, Series of Marines, down I believe at Fort Sam uh, in Texas, but the concept of being able to engage these kind of distances embodying a max point blank, what's beautiful about this is you can tell there's no thinking. Again, that going back to that initial question of does the target exceed 360 meters? Yes, engage the alpha and get back to work. That is so simple that it doesn't take training. It takes very little training, little to no training. Again, all depends on your familiarity behind a rifle and having good trigger pull, have, you know, exercising good fundamentals. But if you do those things, if you're able to master and do those things within close range, at that point, you're gonna be a success at long range. And that's where training can be as short as, if the target exceeds 300 yards, engage the alpha and, and aim center. And that's it. If you really want to break down the science as we did, this is a great video to, you know, elicit an example of what is happening downrange. But it is extremely simple and extremely fast. In the time that it takes to be able to make a judgment, again, I mean, we're looking at massive range blocks, muzzle to 360 from 360 to 530. Those are my range blocks spanning hundreds of meters. I'm not having to 
discern is a target at a specific yard line, which in this case, in real world, will never happen. Targets will not remain static. So this is, it really embodies a real world purpose in the way that we as a shooter will likely see an engagement downrange. And so with that, it's, like I said, it's just, it's easy, it's fast. And in the case of, you know, simplicity, it is easy to make something complicated through electronics, in turn batteries, in turn training. This isn't. You can take someone, say at OSUT, where it was a seven week trainee and at seven weeks, he was able to get a first round impact, first or second round impact as far as 580 meters. At 630, it took him three rounds. That's because he had to figure out, he had to aim top of target. And that's it. So the Alpha can work with any optic and that was something I was circling into. When it comes to an LPVO, magnification makes a clock work. So where the Alpha really shines with a red dot or holographic sight, and using a LPVO, I mean, at that point, you have the option for PID, but also whether you need a quick, you know, precise shot at distance, or if you're just looking to rack some rounds off for shot suppression. Even if, say that you misjudge range, even if you're running and you've been sprinting, you know, and you're, you're going like this, trying to either to range a target, right? Or going up, up and down, making it really hard to be able to laser a target, which we'll, we'll get into another video. But even if you're off, even if you miss, based on the fact that your dope, that your bullet drop is effectively being compensated, even if you miss, I mean, you're, that target, that Mr. White being on the receiving end, well, He's not going to stay there. He's not going to stay on the open. He knows that you are there. And the time that it takes to be able to engage a target is also the time you're exposed to be engaged. So in the event that you are, say, infilling, or say that you take contact in, in an urban environment, cities especially, you know, people have this idea that I'll never need a solution past 300 yards because I don't, I won't take a shot further than that. Cities are built as grids. And so it's nothing to say clear a room and at that point see a threat that will exceed that 300 yard mark. And at that point with a very simple device, you would be able to accurately engage that target. And why would you not want to have every possible advantage to be able to rack that round before they're able to get around at you? That you know that you're going to be neatly on target and you're going to disrupt their ability to function, to maneuver, say to range estimate, to mill, or to say lays you are disrupting that because in the time that a person's doing that, again, you're taking shots and uh, you're, you're not gonna, the person on the receiving end, it will be a disruption. No ifs, ands, or buts. So this is the Alpha Tarak and uh, we really do appreciate from the previous video that we had released where we unveiled what the 4.0 looks like manufactured by ADM. The reoccurring question was, how does it work down range? I understand it shifts the image, but what is it doing? And this is exactly what it's doing. Again, if you were to really debate, render it down to its pure simplicity. If you know you're having to hold, a hold over a target at a distance, we shift image to that holdover. So you just visually see you're aiming at the target and all the rest is taken care of. So, Feel free to ask any other questions. It very well might spur additional content here in the future. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch.